Non-Euclidean Geometry by Rafi Cohen and Kathy Acharya. The story of non-Euclidean geometry begins with the proposal of Euclidean geometry. Euclid was a geometer from Alexandria during the 3rd century CE. To solidify the basis for his ideas, which would later become Euclidean geometry, he declared five basic postulates. He first drew two points. He declared that one and only one line segment exists that has the two points as endpoints. He then expanded on this idea and stated that through this line segment, one and only one line exists that contains the line segment. Next, he used the line segment as a radius and declared that each circle can only be formed by a unique line segment as a radius. Then he drew more lines, this time intersecting at right angles. He stated that all of the right angles formed must be congruent or share the same measure. His last postulate, however, was controversial because Euclid could not determine how to prove it. Euclid drew a line and a point not on this line. He stated that there was only one line that existed that was parallel to the given line and contained the point. This was known as the parallel postulate. Many geometers who followed him or who read his work would question it, and this questioning gave rise to new geometries. The question was raised, what would a geometry look like if the parallel postulate or even other postulates were false? But how would a geometry modeled after this look? In the 1830s, two bold geometers attempted to answer this question, Nikolai Ivanovich Lobachevsky and Janos Bolyai. In order to discover the new geometry, they needed a different perspective, a different basis. They both looked to the skies, a great circle which to them appeared to touch the horizon. In the sky, they both saw spherical masses, stars, planets, and moons. The Earth itself was a sphere. This, they determined, was to be their basis. We live on a sphere, and what we can observe in the universe, beyond the Earth's atmosphere, is also spherical. In order to contemplate this, they imagined a globe, or Earth, as their plane. A line, a continuous path of points which continues on forever, would therefore be the great circle on the globe. In other words, the intersection of the sphere and a plane passing through the origin, or an equator. With this basis, Lobachevsky and Bollier, although working independently, both concluded that they needed to project the sphere onto a plane. Shown here in yellow is the equivalent of a triangle in spherical geometry, formed by the intersection of two great circles and another smaller circle. Because of the curve of the surface of a sphere, the angles in this triangle do not add up to 180 degrees, and the sides appear curved. The geometers discovered that the sum of the angles equals 180 degrees plus the area of the triangle. This is a three-dimensional depiction of what a triangle would look like. Notice the curve of the triangle through space. In 1868, another geometer, Eugenio Beltrami, questioned whether spherical geometry was the only non-Euclidean geometry. After all, spherical geometry still followed Euclid's third postulate. All circles on the sphere could only be formed by a unique radius from a point. Geometers then turned to another figure, discovered through the study of conic sections. They decided to use the hyperboloid, simply a hyperbola rotated in 3D space over an axis, which is shown here. This was projected onto a plane and was shown to have many interesting qualities. It also broke all five of Euclid's postulates. Lines appear as semicircles on a 2D plane, forming a right angle with the infinite bounds of this plane. By intersecting three of these lines, we get a triangle, again distorted by the projection of the hyperboloid on a 2D plane. In this triangle, the sum of the angles equals 180 degrees minus the area of the triangle. The 3D projection of the triangle is shown here as the intersection of a hyperboloid with three planes. Notice how the figure appears like the triangle to the left when viewed from a similar reference point. One of the most interesting features of hyperbolic geometry is tessellations. Here we have a square with four right angles. Normally, four squares can share the same point. Four right angles can all meet at the same point. In non-Euclidean geometry, however, this is not always the case. As we change the scale on our hyperboloid, there becomes more space for more right angles, just as we see here, five squares sharing the same point. Each of these squares has four right angles, and all five meet in one point. But it does not stop here. 
By continuously adjusting the scale, we can fit more squares. Here we have seven. In fact, we can expand the scale to have an infinite number of squares sharing the same point on a 2D plane, all with right angles. Much of hyperbolic geometry has yet to be explored and is still a very impressive and unique geometry. In a geometry where breaking the rules is the basis, there is a never-ending possibility for discovery. Thank you for watching.